I don't want to jinx you or me for that matter, but can you imagine how you'd feel if you lost all of the pictures that you have ever taken on your phone? Now that our phones make it easier to take more and more pictures, it's a bigger and bigger risk. I mean, I'm old enough to remember when we were limited to the number of exposures we had on the film of our cameras, not to mention having to have them processed and developed a few weeks later. Hi, I'm Dave Edwards, and today on Mac Moments, we will explore how to store and use photos on the cloud. Periodically, I like to share tips on how to get the most out of your Mac, especially if you're relatively new to the world of Apple. If you click that subscribe button below, you won't miss any future segments. And while you're at it, consider hitting the like button as well. So let's get started. The first thing you have to do if you want to store your photos in the cloud so they are protected and backed up and you will always have access to them no matter what happens to the hard drive on your computer, is you have to turn on the Cloud Sync feature for the Photos app first. You can do this by turning on iCloud Phone Library on each of your Apple devices. On a Mac, you can set up Cloud Sync from the Photos app. Once you have the app open, head to Photos, then Preferences, then iCloud. Once you're there, select the checkbox for iCloud Photo Library. You'll also find this setting under System Preferences, iCloud, Photos, and Options. Now, the next thing you have to do is deal with how much space in the cloud you have available versus what you'll really need. To start with, Apple gives you five gigabytes for free. That sounds like a lot, but in reality, if you store all of your pictures plus other files and movies, you're gonna go over that amount and you're probably gonna to have to buy additional storage space. But don't worry about it. As I produce this video in 2022, you can get 50 gigabytes for 99 cents a month. Not bad, a buck a month. 200 gigabytes for 299 a month. And if you really need a lot of space, you can get a whopping two terabyte plan for $9.99 a month. These are US prices. And as you can see, adding additional storage is really kind of cheap. And it's pretty important if you wanna store all of your treasured photos. Now, if you wanna figure out how much space you really need, you can find that by going to Home and Pictures, Right click on the photo library icon and choose get info in the context menu to see how much storage space your photos and videos take up. You can see mine there. Of course you can and should take a little time to weed out the duplicate photos or those that didn't turn out or you no longer want. You know what it's like. You, take a picture of, uh, of your grandma, you've got like 10 pictures of her. One turned out really nice. The other one, she was looking away from the camera. She was looking up, whatever. It's pretty smart to delete the pictures that you would never want to look at again. You could also save some space by reducing the quality of the photos you're keeping. And, uh, you know, that's a good idea, particularly if you're not planning on printing, you know, large copies of an individual photo. And, uh, you know, if you're going to primarily look at them online or maybe once in a while put a picture on a Christmas card or something like that, you might be able to get by with a lower resolution. You could also decide if you want to optimize storage. That means saving originals to your device for offline access, keeping originals in the cloud only, open photos, click photos in the menu bar, top left corner, click preferences. Make sure the iCloud tab is selected. Click Optimize Mac Storage. That'll happen if the iCloud photo library is already turned on. Optimize Storage takes files you've been storing in iCloud and moves them off of your computer if your local storage gets too full. It also leaves behind an icon of the item that's been removed so that when you finally do want to take a look at it again, you don't you don't have to go somewhere different to find it. All you gotta do is on that icon that they have left behind, you click on it and it will download that photo or that item back onto your computer 
the next time it is online. So that's really great. You have access to it anytime you are online, but in the meantime, you're saving a lot of space on the hard drive of your computer. Once you turn on the iCloud photo library, every photo and video from your photos will automatically be backed up uh, on the cloud at full resolution. That includes everything, JPEGs, PNGs, GIF images, uh, to 4K videos. There is no option to selective syncing. The actual sync process will take a, quite a bit of time depending on the size of your photo library and of course the speed of your internet. So now let's look at how you can access the photos that you store. You can view all of your iCloud photos and videos in the Photos app on your Apple devices. What's more, you can access them on the web at iCloud.com. When you go there, you're gonna need your Apple ID and your password to open the Photos app on your page. What about non-Apple devices? Can you access iCloud photos on them? Well, it kind of depends. If you are a Windows user, you can actually install iCloud for Windows to access iCloud photos on your PC. With the app installed, you can also upload photos from your Windows picture library to iCloud, and Apple provides all the necessary instructions on their website. So now let's say you wanna share some of your photos with someone else. For example, just recently, uh, I was able to go to Disney World with my daughter and her family, including our two grandkids and, of course, my wife. We took a lot of pictures. I mean, I took a lot of pictures. My daughter took a lot of pictures. Her husband took a lot of pictures. Well, we wanted to share them. So let me tell you what we did. We, of course, have enabled the iCloud photo sharing feature. But you can do that this way. On a Mac, from the Photos app, go to Photos preferences, iCloud, and just enable that checkbox for iCloud photo sharing. If you're on an iPhone or an iPad, you can find the toggle switch for iCloud photo sharing under settings, your name, and iCloud and photos. So at this point, the photos app gets a new section called shared. In this section, you will find a start sharing button to help you create your first shared album. After that, you'll just use a plus button in the shared albums to create more of them. Once the new album is in place, you'll see it listed under shared, shared albums on your Mac. On your iPhone or iPad, you'll find it under shared. So let's say I get photos from my daughter. I can add them to my own library. Uh, if I set up an album, I can invite anyone to take a look at my uh, pictures. They're all residing in the cloud. So uh, anybody who is, gets an invitation, uh, we'll have access to them. You can actually even share albums with non-iCloud users, but that's only if you turn the album into a public website. And if you go to iCloud.com, uh, they will tell you exactly how to do that. There is a lot more to know about how to take better pictures and edit them using your Mac, and we will cover more of that in future episodes. So don't forget to subscribe to the series, then you won't miss any of them. I'm Dave Edwards. Thanks for joining me today.